we're going to come in. He's going to show me around the network room. We're going to walk around these tables here, and he's going to basically add me to the server, which we're going to get up on the screen up here for everybody to see. All right. Hey there. Yes, sir. How are you? Not bad. Uh, I got sent over from HR. They uh, new intern and in the IT department. Your name is Dade. Yeah. Yeah. Dave Murphy. That's me. Nice to meet you. Motor network room here. All right. These are our routers and switches. This is also our wireless router as well. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Is this your access point? Yes. Awesome. Great. Cool. All right. So shall we get over to the server room? Yeah. Server? Or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Right click new user. Even if you log in, click next, password. Properties, accounts, log on hours, and six, six, and It's only permitted from six to six, Monday through Friday. His account will expire Thursday, April 13th, 2017. Great. So, what's my password? Uh, ABC one two three. ABC one two three four. Um, tell us. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It's an honor coming here. Appreciate it. All right. So, um, could you do me a favor, please? Open up your Internet Explorer. to 192.168.11.1. All right, go to management. Go to capture packets. the land. Go ahead and hit start. We're going to give this a few seconds. What this is doing is he's capturing network packets on the land side of things. Go ahead and hit stop now. Download. Uh, you're going to need to open it with notepad. Alright, now I want you to scroll down a little bit. We're going to look for traffic. Okay, so it looks like we do have one thing here. There's a packet coming in at 192.1, that one right there. It's getting pink. And if we run it longer, you would see that happening multiple times. That's because at this point, what we've done is uh, we've taken over your land. And how do we do, Mr. Bentley? Yep. Are you restarting now? Are you restarting? <coughs> okay. Now, you are no longer the server admin. Uh, we are the server admin. That's fired. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. After this whole thing, yeah. And now we're going to steal all your information off of this server. Yeah, go ahead. Well, it's going to take a minute to boot back up. <laughs> so that was a very quick demonstration. Um, it really wasn't a come in and server demonstration or anything like that. Uh, it kind of was in a way. We've done multiple things. Uh, what ended up happening is when you weren't looking, I dropped a network device onto your network. Then when we went back over here to the server, 
I used a little USB drive here in my pocket. I plugged it in, created an admin account, and uh, boosted it to a domain admin. And from that, Mr. Bentley back there was able to use that newly created user account to log in to the server he's currently at. Now, obviously, in the real world, we wouldn't be logging in while he was still sitting at the desk. We'd be doing it after hours. Nor would we disable the account. We don't want to show anybody that we're here. We want to get in, take as much data as we can, get out unnoticed. Obviously, for this demonstration, we were kind of being a little less careless. So, here is the device we used to attack the network with. It looks like a regular Ethernet adapter. It even says USB Ethernet adapter on it. It is a Linux computer. You plug it in, you're going to get a uh, DHCP address. It's going to issue you one. It works just like a USB Ethernet adapter. You plug it in, you can plug in the other side and get, you know, internet traffic. Uh, but what it does, in addition to that, is whatever you want it to do. It is a Linux computer. So in this case, we had it set up to transmit to Mr. Bentley, who is actually over the WAN network. He's not on the same network as Tanner is. It transmitted to him a way to get onto Tanner's network. It's called a reverse shell. So it's kind of like if we had a computer on the inside, which we were allowed to remote into. This is exactly what this device did. Pretty handy thing to do. Um, because as you guys know, being networking students and all that, getting out of a network is easy. Getting into a network because there's access lists and things like that, not so easy. So this will find a port that is open, go through it and say, hey, uh, here you go, come on in. We'll let you in. Likewise, this other device is called a rubber ducky. And what it will do is it will actually run commands on the uh, machine that you plug it into, whatever you tell it to run. And it's very simple script, isn't it, guys? Very easy, the guys who are looking at it, very easy script. It's basically just telling the computer, hey, Open up a window and do this. <laughs> go ahead and uh, go ahead and try and log back in. Now. You just did. I did. It's right there. Did the block you out? Yeah, your account has been disabled. Please see your system initiator. Go ahead and log in using. Uh, <laughs> did you fix it? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we could just log in. Hit other user. Z cool. Z C O O L. I was going to say you need Password it. is again ABC one two three four dollar sign. Now, if you were up on your pop, pop culture, the name Dave Murphy is actually from the movie Hackers. He called himself Zero Cool in that movie. Check it out. It's pretty neat. That's an old <laughs> movie. <laughs> All right. So now you're logged in at Zero Cool. Um, I want to show you guys how quick and you know if this isn't going to work because he's logged in as no really cool. Did you, uh, let's enable your account. Go to tools, users and computers. And sorry guys, this computer is really slow and old. I built it in my garage. It sits in my garage so I can attack it over and over again. <laughs> All right, go to users down here and scroll down to the bottom. There should be a new user, Zero Cool. That's the new user we created. Uh, don't do anything with it yet. Go up to the admins folder. And there's the domain admin. You can go ahead and enable yourself. And go to right click on domain admins and go to properties. You notice there, click on members. There's zero cool right there. He's been added as a member. All right, so now that you've been, you've re enabled your account, go ahead and log out as zero cool. I want to show you how quick this goes. And log back in as admin, like the same password again. Mm 
uh, go into the users and computers and delete z uh, zero cool. There was a third device we were going to bring in and show you guys, which is also pretty neat. Um, some of you have seen it, some of you, a lot of you haven't. And uh, it's called a Wi Fi pineapple. And what it does <laughs> is the names. What it does is something very interesting. So it, every device that you have, a laptop, a phone, all of it projects Wi Fi. And it's doing this constantly because, you know, when you walk into a place you've been before, your phone or device automatically connects back up to it, right? That's because your phone is probing for those networks that it knows. The Wi-Fi pineapple, what it does is it sees those probes and says, hey, I'm that. So then what happens is we can de-authenticate you from the network that you know if we're needed, near it. If we're not near it, we'll just say, hey, it's me, and then have your phone connect over to me. And then from there, I can gather up passwords, information, user IDs from your phone. And you would have no idea. Aaron, the other day, he, uh, when he was over here, we got a uh, router off his phone that he hadn't been on in a long time. It was from his old address. He hadn't been near that router in a very long time. You said you don't even have that router anymore, right? Yeah, it's sitting in my closet. Yeah, sitting in his closet. But his phone was still looking for it. I was able to grab that. We found his MAC address. We were able to view his MAC address, and we could have easily pulled his phone over and gotten information off of it. It's a very nice device, very scary device. <laughs> Mr. Bentley, when he walked in the room, he turned off his Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. <laughs> First thing he did when he saw me. <laughs> so, just to, you know, kind of illustrate how it happened. You got that name out? Alright, so let's take a look and see how fast this goes. It's very... You can make it very unnoticeable, but I've enabled it now so you can actually view what's happening. All right, so I'm just going to plug in real quick. There it goes. It's doing it all by itself. Tanner's not doing a thing. There it is, creating the user account. It's assigning it a password. It's enabling the account. The last thing it did was it added it to the group and it's done. That quick. Go ahead. Look at Zero Cool. <coughs> um, we do have a Linux course coming up next semester that people can sign up for. Uh, we're not going to teach you this. <laughs> but, uh, but we will teach you how to use Linux. In fact, everything we have done here today, we set up the network. It is going over a simulated WAN address. That's, you know, all Dr. Rollins and Mr. Bentley's side of things. Obviously, the servers, you guys know I do the servers. Now, we'll be doing the Linux stuff as well. Um, as soon as, you know, you guys finish up with any of that, you can do everything I've done here. Everything. Everything in this degree program teaches you how networks, how servers, how everything on the internet interacts with each other and how it all works. Because this is the stuff that is out on the internet. It's what the internet is made of. It's made of servers, it's made of networks. And plus I know a lot of you are very interested in the security side of things and obviously attackers are going to be using Linux, not Windows. Yeah, some use Windows. Um, any questions? Anybody want to play with it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can if you want. Uh, as long as I'm here. <laughs> well, you know, you can take it home, you know, just see, you know. Uh, oh, yeah, if you want to go take a look at what Mr. Bentley has back here. Uh, Mr. Bentley, do you want to go ahead and run that command? I'll plug it back in. So back there, Mr. Bentley has a Raspberry Pi I plugged in as a Linux server that this device connects to. Remember, it is on a completely separate LAN than what we're on. We're going over the internet to get Sorry. You have the command up, Mr. Bentley? Yep. So that quick, I've got it plugged in. 
here in a few seconds, Mr. Bentley will now have access to the router, to the server, to anything he wants on that network using the reverse shell. It does take a few seconds. It takes about 30 seconds for that one to boot up. And then a few more seconds to connect. Okay. Is it up? Yep. All right, so what you're looking at there is the operating system on that device. If he, uh, he ran what's called list view, which lists all the folders in on that operating system. And remember, it is not this device. It is that device over there, which is across the network. Uh, from here, he can do things like a network map. He can map every device that's on the network, get all the IP addresses, all the MAC addresses, everything like that. He can also create what's called an auto SSH, which means he can afterwards disconnect from it and connect whenever he wants at that point. So he can connect back to it, you know, at a later time or date. He can set up a file transfer pro protocol, FTP. He can get into, now that he has the server access, he can get into any files and folders he wants, steal any information he wants, and get out. And the company's at a loss, you know, nobody's going to notice until suddenly they see their proprietary software out on the internet for everybody to view.